pleasant call all day. Putin was a pleasant call. This is ridiculous. The Commander-in-Chief is fed up and he's shifting the blame. I want the Attorney General to be much tougher on the leaks from intelligence agencies. That Attorney General, the embattled Jeff Sessions, is under pressure to perform under a strict new regime led by Trump's new Chief of Staff, former General John Kelly. I have this warning for would-be leakers. Don't do it. With the number of leaks tripling under the Trump administration, Sessions announced the creation of a new FBI department dedicated to handling leaks. He's also ramped up the president's war with the media, threatening to review the issuing of subpoenas to journalists. We will not allow rogue anonymous sources with security clearances to sell out our country. Even lie detectors are being floated as a way to identify leakers. I think it's easier to figure out who's leaking than, some may real than the leakers may realize. Trump has now flown to New Jersey for a two-week holiday at his private golf club, so repairs can be done on the West Wing. One of the tasks for maintenance workers, fittingly, fixing leaking pipes. Robert Penpole, NBN News. A man is tonight behind bars, accused of being involved in an arson attack on a Sydney function centre linked to the Obeid family. The man's lawyer says his client will fight the charges, while police are expected to make further arrests. Omar Jamal Adeen claims he didn't know police were watching him. It became obvious when officers ripped him out of his car near his Wiley Park home. The 33-year-old taken to Bankstown Police Station to be charged over an explosive blaze at the Bellevue Reception Centre in January. What's depicted in the footage is incredibly dangerous and those men are lucky that they didn't kill themselves. While police don't believe he is one of the two men in this CCTV, he is accused of taking part in the act of arson with them. The second attack targeted at the business, which is part owned by a son of Eddie O'Bead, the disgraced politician currently serving jail time. While the arrest marks a breakthrough in the investigation into this fire, several questions remain unanswered. Police still working out who else was involved and why they torched this popular venue. Of interest, a development application lodged with Canterbury Council to build a new, much larger project on the site. Jamal Ladeen chose not to appear in court today, charged with dishonestly for gain damaged property. The arrest comes as a shock. It did to him. His lawyer says he is an innocent man who has never been in custody before. He'll be defending these charges and we'll be making a bail application on Thursday. Kelly Fedor, NBN News. Police in the United States are using a state-of-the-art database of bullet casings to solve cases by linking them with guns seized at crime scenes. American authorities say gun crime is soaring, with offenders arming themselves with military-style weapons. High-powered and fully automatic. These are serious weapons. And they're tools of the trade for Los Angeles SWAT teams. But what's frightening is criminals here in America have their hands on these guns too. How dangerous are these weapons? Um, very dangerous. Like uh, Weapons like the M4... You know, they will, they will shoot through the body armor. A gang member shot Sergeant Robert William two weeks after getting out of jail. That's how easy it is to get a gun. Uh, we're not exactly sure how they come across it. This is a small sample of the illegal firearms authorities have seized from offenders. This is a 223 caliber that was recovered off of a suspect last year. Every firearm has a unique fingerprint left on its casing. Well, after it's shot. Those fingerprints are being recorded on a federal database and investigators using them to solve crimes. Not only do you find a crime gun at a scene, you take that crime gun and you shoot it and you have casings that you can then input into the database. And when police come across a new firearm or casing at a crime scene, they can compare it to information already on the database. And if there's a hit, that will give, give us some sort of a lead to the crime that has not been solved yet. The SWAT team is training with fully automatic assault rifles and 9mm submachine guns, just to name a few. In some cases where criminals are using these weapons, police have been able to link them with unsolved crimes within 24 hours.
That's what happened when Sergeant William was investigating the robbery. When we checked the firearm shell casings, we learned that the same suspects, or at least the firearms, was linked to two other murders outside of our city. So it allowed us to work very closely with investigators from those cities to be able to solve all three crimes. The database is critical for a city struggling with soaring crime. What sort of crimes would you see being committed with these sorts of weapons? Um, you know, obviously like robberies, um, but you know, the gang members also use them to, when they're fighting each other, try by shootings and things like that. But investigators who once hit dead ends are getting results. You get the trigger pullers off the streets here. 30 Australian firefighters have answered Canada's call for help, leaping from Sydney today to help battle massive wildfires that have been ravaging British Columbia since April. A further 110 specialist crew will arrive later in the week. There's already 48 members over there at the moment, but our people are amongst the...